Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Thursday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great, even though we're currently in the middle of another lockdown, and who really knows what's going on? If you could please hit that like button, you could please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button to get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of all of my videos. Before anything, I want to say go Leafs go. I know everybody assumes they're going to crap the bucket. Who knows? Maybe they do. But I'm rooting for my team, and I don't even care. At the end of the day, go Leafs, go. So, today, I got asked a question. Well, it wasn't today that I got asked a question, but I'm going to speak on it today. But the other day, I got asked a question. Who are the most respected inmates? Which inmates get the most respect across the system? So I, I actually really thought about this question, and I was like, you know what, that's actually a good question, because... It might not be what people think. It might be exactly what people think. But I think for the most part, if you go to most penitentiaries, it's going to be the same idea. And if you go to the provincial system, it's going to be similar. So, I'm, I did a list of six. There are six inmates that you will see respected in every prison, no matter where you go. And this is my list. So, the number six most respected inmate in any jail is a lifer. Now, not all lifers have respect. A lot of people don't like lifers. A lot of the time, after a long time, doing hard time, they kind of change. They kind of soften up. They become different. But that's not who I'm talking about. Because when lifers first come through the door, they initially get that respect. Now, I don't know if it's a courtesy I don't know if it's because they're gangster, if people are intimidated by them, if they're scared of them because they killed somebody or what. But typically, when a lifer comes through the doors of a jail, they're just given the courtesy of respect. Now, I think people just assume that they put in some work, that it's not some weirdo murder or some guy killed a little kid or killed a woman or, or something like that. Who knows? But at the end of the day, any prison you go to, you're going to see lifers getting respect. Now, is it fear-based respect or is it respect because somebody's a good person? That I can't tell you. I'm sure for every individual it's different. But I think a lot of the time it's probably fear-based. People just assume that because this person is in for a murder that they're prepared to kill somebody. When a lot of the time actually lifers have the lowest recidivism rate are the least likely to reoffend, and most likely are gonna not do anything again illegal in their life. But, when they come through, a lot of them ain't prepared to deal with the BS, they're angry because they just got sentenced to a whole bunch of time. And don't get it twisted, a lot of lifers are killers, are budmon, and that's why I have the number six most respected inmate in any jail you go to as lifers. So I made a little bit of a list. Just to, you know, kind of go to it. The number five most respected inmate in any prison, whether you go to a provincial system, the federal system, is organized crime offenders. Now, whether it's a gang member, a mafia guy, a biker, it doesn't really member, matter. If that person has a high-ranking status in any gang, they most likely will be respected and once again, I think it's fear-based a lot of the time. I'm not saying every killer is going to respect every killer and look at them like they're bob boys. But I think when most guys are just regular criminals, maybe they're doing some thefts or doing some break and enters, maybe even a robbery, they look at, a, they look at somebody who's in organized crime and they say, I'm going to give that guy his respect. If that guy demands that respect on the street, if people are prepared to follow that guy, Obviously, that guy is something and stands for something. So I'm also going to give that person my respect. Now, obviously, respect is an unconditional. And it can just depend on who you are as an individual in any circumstance. So this isn't across the board. It's not like every organized crime dude is going to have respect. 
or every lifer is going to have respect. I'm just saying generally, when you see these kind of guys throughout the system, people respect them, give them their space, and accept that they're probably looking at a lot of time. So we're just going to give them the courtesy of being respectful. And that's why number five most respected inmate in any prison, federal, provincial, is an organized crime or gang leader or an institutional gang leader or bud boy gang leader from the street. It just depends. But they get their respect. It just is what it is. So the number four most respected inmate in the system is somebody who's got a skill. If you have a skill, some kind of an ability that people want, you will be respected, whether it's real respect, whether it's cap, I don't know. Whether people are just trying to manipulate to get what you got and what you're capable of doing, I don't know. But typically, if you go to a provincial jail or a federal jail, if guys have skills where they can do something that most guys can't do, they're going to get that courtesy. Tattoo artists in the federal system, if they're a legit tattoo artist and they're good, they're going to skate. They're going to smoke. They're going to live nice. People are going to take care of them because they know they'll do good tattoos. They're going to get work out of it. Therefore, they'll get their respect a lot of the time, even when it's uncalled for. I've seen guys in my years through the federal system, they're weirdos. They're certified weirdos. But they can tattoo. Or they're electricians. Or something like that. Something that people can make use of. And they get their respect. And it's manipulation. It's not respect like, yeah, that's my dog. But they don't go through the problems. People give them a bligh because of what they're capable of doing. And that's why... Number four on my list, most respected inmate is somebody who's got a skill, tattooing, electrician, somebody who's got a lighter, so anything like that, you're going to get a little respect. The number three most respected inmate in the federal system, the provincial system on any compound is the guy who's got the contraband. You got weed, you got heroin, you got... Tobacco, which is, believe me, tobacco is the number one selling contraband. The number one priority. People want it over drugs. People want it over weapons. Tobacco, 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 tobacco. And guys fiend out for it. So, if you got a guy that's successfully bringing in tobacco, you got a guy that's successfully bringing in weed or anything like that, you're going to see a whole group of guys prepared to do their dirty work, prepared to smash people for them, following them around like puppy dogs, doing some real like simp stuff because they want that courtesy. They want to be able to get some of that dope out of that bag. And that's why anytime you see the guy who has it, there'll be a tale of people. Yeah, dog, you're the smartest. Bro, you know what it is. Like they're telling them everything they want to hear. Anywhere you go, that's why number three on this list Whoever's got the contraband. It just is what it is. Now, if you're a sucker, people can slap you out, take advantage of you, punk you off for your cigarettes or your dope, then they'll probably do that. But if you're somebody who's prepared to stand on your own, stand 10 toes down, you got anybody who's prepared to ride for you, then you're going to get the respect. People are going to use that respect to manipulate you, to try to get what they can. And that's why the number three most respected person in any prison is the guy who's got the contract. So number two on my list. Now this is a very vague answer. Number two on this list is anybody prepared to stand 10 toes down for what they believe in. Anybody who goes into the system is prepared to fight for themselves, to protect themselves, to stand up for what they believe in. Anybody who's prepared to stand up for the causes of the block, and just be a real true convict through and through is going to get respect. Doesn't matter if you're the toughest guy in the world. Doesn't matter if you're the most gangster guy in the world. As long as you have principles that people can relate to, that convicts understand, then you will get that respect. I never walked with a shank ever. I never walked around in there like I was going to stab people like I was some sick gangster. But I always had respect I was funny, I made people laugh, I had a good time. I didn't let the stress 
of the time bring me down. I didn't lay that on everybody else. I wasn't one of those dudes complaining about my time. And people respect that you're a real one. So it doesn't necessarily matter that you're a bud boy. But respect isn't automatic. In prison, the people who get respect. In jail, the people who get respect are the people who demand it. You don't have to be super gangster, like I said. But you do have to be prepared to stand up for yourself. In prison, people take advantage of people. It is what it is. The strong survive. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And that's why number two on my list is anybody prepared to stand ten toes down, prepared to stand up for themselves. People are going to respect you. Even if you lose every fight, but you go to every fight and you swing your hands in every fight, people will respect you. The number one most respected guy across any prison, honestly, is a killer. It's a killer. It don't matter if they're big, tall, short, small. If people know in the streets, they're slapping people down especially if they're not doing time for it, people are going to respect that. You see little dudes controlling lots of guys like marionettes because they know if they disrespect this man when they touch the road, they're going to get a headshot. It is what it is. Like when you go to prison, the federal system or the provincial system, specifically in the city, there's a lot of guys you have to be careful that you don't fight them specifically if you live in the city, you may be able to smash their face in, destroy them, wipe the floor with them, make them look waste. But what do you think is going to happen if you see that person in the street? What do you truly think is going to happen? Killers, cop killers specifically. If you're a cop killer, the jail is yours. But killers all around, people look at them with I don't know what the word is. It's almost like, I wouldn't say respect. I'd say it's even more than that. Because when you're going through the system, when you're a convict, you don't think like, I want to change my life. I want to be a better person. You're like, I want to be a bud boy. F the system. I'm going to do what I want. So when you see somebody who's at the highest level of that, this person just slaps somebody down for disrespect them. They're not even doing time for that. People respect that. Respect isn't always love. Respect isn't always like somebody really checking for you. Sometimes it's fear-based. And in prison, you see that more than anywhere else. But I'm telling you, every single person on this list, and there's lots of them, they're not all the same. They're, they may be in a category, but they're not the same people. But typically, any jail you go to, if somebody fits into one of these categories, they're most likely going to have their respect. They're most likely going to be doing okay time. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys, so you guys don't have to go through these things yourselves. If I can snap my finger, nobody needs to go to prison. Nobody needs to have respect in prison. Nobody's addicted to drugs. Nobody needs to go through rehabilitation. Nobody experiences abuse. And that's what I do. But that's not a reality, especially in 2021. This world is just <clears throat> thumbs down. Everybody's kind of losing their minds. All this lockdown and stuff's kind of making everybody go a little cuckoo, cuckoo, if you know what I'm saying. And <clears throat> obviously by sharing my stories, I just hope that people hear it. And make that change before they have to go through the things that I did. If you could please hit that like button. If you could please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button. To get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media. Help spread the message. Help spread the word. That would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate. Help support the channel. The link is in the description of all of my videos. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are typically inmates that are going to get respect no matter what prison. Lifers, gang members, gang leaders, somebody who's got a skill, the guy who's got the contraband, somebody who's prepared to stand up for themselves, and last but not least, the killer, man. The killer ultimately has the most respect, and the cop killer is just a pedestal. And whether that's wrong or right, I don't know. This is prison. Prison is a hierarchy. You know, it just is what it is. There's always somebody at the top. 
And then as you go down the hierarchy, you'll see guys with lesser and lesser and lesser status. And that is how prison is. It's run like that. And there's nothing we can do to change it. So what do you got to do? You got to go to prison under the understanding that no matter what, you're going to leave with your manhood and your pride. You're going to stand up for yourself no matter what. You're not going to let somebody punk you down. And if you go in with that mindset, you'll walk, in res res walk out with respect. Just treat people how you would want to be treated. And the chance of you just getting into unnecessary stuff is slim to nil, although not impossible. Love each and every one of you. The new Mac.